two. Oh. two. Okay. We're done. All right. This is an, uh, it's recording, by the way, so. What's that? It's recording. This is a follow on. It doesn't matter if it's recording or not. I'm just telling you, you've promised five minutes. Cooks, I'm trying to disappear. And you keep following me everywhere. I'm trying to get home safe. Right, quickly, uh, we've kind of touched on this weekend. I want to ask you about the situation regarding Joshua and Usyk at the moment, um, which is quite sensitive. Nah, but I don't really want to, I'm not going to, I don't really want to talk about it. I think what Alexander Usyk is going through in his life is, is horrendous. I think it's a disgrace. And uh, I don't really want to talk about it, to be honest. That my heart goes out to everyone in Ukraine. Uh, Alexander Usyk, what a man, what a person. Uh, you know what mate it's mad we shouldn't even be talking about sport when it comes to what's going on in ukraine right now but we have to because we're at this bill i get that but as regards until i see alexander usik leave ukraine safely and get hot and get and get out of there i don't really want to speak about it mate so i just credit him mate so much mate it's it's unbelievable what he's doing uh, standing up to a tyrant a bully and an honorable fucker uh, I give so much credit, mate. The world needs to come together and stop what's going on in Ukraine. It really does. The question was more kind of targeted towards is, Joshua mate. and no, Usyk, whether it's going to happen next. We can't talk about a fight that's happening when a man's in Ukraine fighting a fucking war. You can't talk about a fight, lad. So, as for AJ, massive, should be commended. The boy really should. He's here, uh, wants to go back in with, with, with with one of the best fighters that's ever lived. Not a best fighter in the world, I one of the best fighters that's ever lived. He's that good, so I commend AJ, uh, massive what he's doing, so. Yeah, let, let, let's just get Alexander Usyk out of Ukraine safely first, and then let's have a chat about it. Eddie Hearn has said, if there is an interim fight for Joshua because of this situation, he's kind of thrown a few names that potentially Joshua could fight. That still could be the situation, we don't know, but. I mean, to talk about AJ having an interim fight is is a bit mad in itself. It's mad, it's dampening, and I'd be worrying for him, but at the same time, uh, he's he's a megastar, he's a superstar kook, so every time he fights, made this huge demand to watch him. Uh, and, and I get it with the interim fight, he's going to want to test some things out, he's going to want to probably work towards a strategy, a game plan, whatever have you, but make no mistake, no matter who he faces, whether that was going to be... Uh, fellow who cut Tyson Fury, whether it was going to be him, uh, it didn't matter who's going to face, no one's going to be able to replicate what Alexander Usyk does in the ring, it's just, it's just not happening. So, Is it a risk to take that kind of interim fight? Because Anthony Josh is one of the best heavyweights in the world, so it's not a risk at all. If you're one of the best, which he is, no two ways about it, then you can fight and beat anyone else. There's two guys out there right now who look like they can beat him and I've got the beating of him, but you can't write him off at any stage. Anthony Joshua is the best athlete that the heavyweight division has ever seen, in my opinion, as an athletic specimen. Once the experience and the boxing knowledge catch up to that to that athleticism, he's a fucking problem. And he will catch up because the boys are a diligent students and he's a brilliant fighter, so yeah, he's catching up, man. I, I, I love AJ, he's a brilliant lad. I've harped on before about the things he's done for boxing, but uh, he's in a tough spot at the minute, but he's working hard, away from the lights, away from the cameras. He's doing his job, believe you me. He's preparing, and he'll be ready, no matter when this happens or when he gets back in the ring, he'll be ready. I have a full belief in him. Just finally, obviously the flip side, or the flip fight to this, is the fight on the 23rd of April at Wembley between Fury and White. We know how high, highly you rate Tyson Fury uh, as a heavyweight as well. But are people wrong to dismiss Dillian White in this fight? Only a fool would dismiss Dillian White. Only a fool. Dillian White winning by knockout would not shock me whatsoever. Dillian White, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, is a problem for any heavyweight in the world. He's big, he's brave, he can punch, and he's durable. Them attributes alone make him a problem. You can't just go in and, and blast out Dillian White in a round. I'm sorry. And if you do happen to blast up Dillian White in a round, you're going to know about it first. He's clocked you a few times as well. Trust me. He's big and he's brave, mate. Uh, Dillian's a problem. Barring that Pavekin hiccup, which, as I've said before, and I'll say again, is a once-in-a-career punch, what Pavekin does. He's down twice. He's on the verge of getting stopped. 
he closes his eyes and he throws a left uppercut come hook from hell and it lands. That's, that's heavyweight boxing. Dillian White could do the exact same thing, exact same thing to Tyson Fury. I'm not sure Tyson Fury has the one punch KO power to just rid Dillian White of his senses in one, with one shot. What Tyson Fury does possess is a skill set to frustrate Dillian White and to gradually break down and hurt Dillian White. Body shots will be a factor, even though Dillian White is a better body puncher than Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury's inside work is really impressive and really good. For a big man, his movement is a problem for Dillian White. His footwork is a huge problem for Dillian White going into the fight. So there's so many tangibles going into the fight that we can talk about. But ultimately, I believe questions are going to be asked. He's going to have to get off the floor again. I'm pretty sure of that. Can Dillian White keep Tyson Fury on the floor? I'm not so sure. Will Dillian White tire? That's what I worry about because there's so much on it going into this fight. I think the silence from him is brilliant. I think it's a masterstroke because all the questions and all the problems and questions are being thrown at Tyson Fury. It's not his fault. What's going to happen on the night will be ex exciting and be, will be a brilliant fight to watch. It will not be easy. It will not be one-sided. I don't care who's saying it is, you're wrong. This will not be a one-sided beatdown because Dillian is too big, too brave, too strong to let that happen. He's shown that against various heavyweights in the world. Big, big dudes. Big dudes. Even when he was out of shape after eating everything that MasterChef could offer, he still puts in a valiant performance against Hellenius. And Hellenius is a big, big old lump. So, Dillian's a problem, man. He really is. And I wouldn't write him off whatsoever. Tyson Fury's the clear favourite going in. No two ways about it. And it's now been seven minutes. You said five. Yes, actually, yes. Your watch works. Nothing. Wherever. Fake, it's, it's really good for a fake. It, it's, it's brilliant. Nice. It's a nice watch. One day, I hope I have one. One day, I mean, if, if, when I grow up, hopefully, when I grow up, I can have what you've got on your wrist. So we'll see. Hopefully, one day. Maybe Eddie might get me one again. Exhibition over three rounds. Yeah. Ah, oh, mate. Wow. That that's going a bit far. Since I've been retired for what? Astounded. No one's offered you that though. Surely. Eh. Yeah. I just think the you non-content know, and. Me and Ed have spoke over the years. I have loyalty to him, so I wouldn't deal with anyone else, really. Uh, I said, when I came to him, I said, I'll finish my career with you. And, uh, and we've been true to our words, so yeah. And he doesn't want to promote me anymore. He thinks I'm fat and past it. Uh, he's actually got a shock, though, recently. When he's seen them abs, he was like, oh, there has been a difference in you. So the abs have gone now, you know. They're... You're not fat. You might be past it, but you're not fat. Nice one. Thanks, Cooks. But uh, yeah, I'm trying, mate. I'm trying. Don't worry about it. Right, press conference is about to start. It's going to be a, a great week here in Leeds. It always is. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. What a place. What a place. What a set of fans. The greatest atmosphere I ever witnessed in all of boxing. It happened here last time. Joshua Warrington faced Maurizio Lard in that rematch. I've never witnessed anything like it. I keep getting told, oh, you know, Kiko Martinez came here last time to Leeds and he'll be used to this. It wasn't like that when Kiko Martinez came. This is something else now because they now know Every Josh Warrington fight that happens between now and then could be his last. It wasn't like that the first time he faced Kiko Martinez. That's the difference between then and now. Is Warrington's career on the line this weekend? Wow, wow. His championship expectations are, maybe not his career, but his championship expectations are. He loses this fight and ideally, and I think he can only lose it by knockout. He gets stopped here. It's a long, hard road back. It really, really is. Big fight. Uh, undercard press conference is just about to start, is it? The undercard one or is it the full one? It's the full one. Uh, it looks like the full because they're all sitting down. Maxi's there, Ebony's there, Sky's there. Yeah, uh, the, the exciting, brilliant prospect that is Dalton Smith is there. So, yeah, there's some, uh, some huge talent here. And we also have an amazing translator. I don't know this guy's name, but I swear he's a fan. He's very good. He is brilliant, mate. I'm a fan of him. He, I think he's absolutely fantastic. I wish he could give me some Spanish lessons. I want to learn to speak another language. Why? Just do. Who are you going to call that in Spanish? <laughs> I learned a bit of Spanish before fighting me, uh, Balonte. And uh, yeah, called him a few choice words and told him I was going to smash his face in and, uh, and a couple of other words, but we won't get over them. So, hola, obrigado, whatever you want to know. Eh, cabrone. Eh, cabrone. Eh, cabrone, cabrone. Cabrone, hasta el amigo. Eh, cabrone. 
Thank you very much.